Hey everyone, this is Vince with Utopia Studios and today I'm going to share my experience in building the now fairly known Silver Flyer DIY Steadicam for DSLR cameras as well as camcorders and other stuff. I'm entirely new at DSLR photography and video. I literally just got this Canon T5i after doing quite a bit of research on what would fit best for my needs as a beginner. In my research, I stumbled on some awesome DIY videos by a bunch of people on YouTube, including Film Riot, The Frugal Filmmaker, Matt Chapman, just to name a few. And the video that got my attention the most initially was the one by uh, Jorge Ramirez, or I'm sorry, Jorge Martinez, where he builds a steady cam out of a metal conduit and uh, some weights. I thought that was pretty cool and was something that I could tackle. So I watched a ton of other videos as well that took this idea and used very similar but sometimes slightly different methods of using the same materials and whatnot. Tripster 702's version was also really cool and I scrutinized all parts of the build to see if I could achieve the same results. And so I'm going to now show you what uh, I was able to build. I uh, hope you find this informative. If uh, sometime in the future I'm able to create a, an actual step-by-step uh, -step video on how to make this, I will. But for now, um, here's the result. So here's the uh, Steadicam fully assembled and uh, I think I'm almost done with it. There may be a few little things that I want to do to it, uh, mainly having to do with balance and also uh, being able to control the rotation of the camera and the gimbal as a whole. Uh, right now what I've done is I've placed um, a second bearing on top of the first bearing. Uh, so here's my second bearing and if uh, I can show you here real quick. I've got uh, the first bearing is underneath, so it's inside the coupler, and then I put another bearing on top, and then the Traxxas goes right into both bearings. So this allows me um, to have a little bit more friction so that uh, when I turn around, it's not just completely out of control. And uh, I can also put my thumb on here if I want to and push up a little bit and control it a little bit, but that's, that's still a project that I'm working on, hoping uh, to have a different control here. I've seen some other um, gimbals where there's a little uh, a plate of certain, some sort of serrated plate or something that you can hold on there and, and control things a little bit better. But basically when you look at this, um, I've got the the Traxxas down here, Traxxas 1651, which is widely used by most people uh, building these um, these days. And up here is a macro slider plate with a uh, quick release plate on top of that. So the nice thing about this macro slider is that it allows you to really dial in uh, the balance uh, forward and backwards for the camera. So this knob right here moves the whole thing forward and backwards and this other knob here tightens it down. I use some uh, standard fender washers, everything's quarter inch um, and uh, when you use these uh, couplers, the uh, three quarter inch uh, uh, metal couplers, uh, you'll have to probably drill down with a quarter inch bit into uh, the, the holes that are already there for the screws to tighten uh, because they just don't fit. The quarter inch, at least not the ones that I bought through, uh, these were at Home Depot, uh, these quarter inch um, screws or bolts or whatever just uh, don't, not bolts, what am I talking about? Quarter inch uh, hex screws don't uh, go in that easily and you have to actually screw it down. So there's my washers with uh, butterfly uh, fastener and same thing down here pretty much. And you'll notice that I've offset these to the right. Uh, in the case of my Canon T5i, when I open up the uh, LCD display to the left, it really changes the balance quite a bit, believe it or not. It's crazy how extending something so light will make a big difference like that. So I just have to add a couple of few washers just to make things a little bit more balanced. And that's about it. Now as far as the uh, handle is concerned, all this is is just an old Razor scooter handle um, that I fit over a uh, half inch PVC pipe 
and then used um, a regular half inch coupler which is actually I believe it's three quarter inch on the inside and that is why I had to shave off the inside of the coupler with uh, a bit to get the um, um, the bearing to fit underneath that and then the Traxxas actually I did not shave it down to a little nub on the other end of this now, I'm gonna stop right now so I can show you exactly what that looks like All right, so I took the handle off of uh, off of the Traxxas so here's my second bearing that I put on top and what I did to this thing is um, I took a, an X-Acto knife or actually a box cutter knife and uh, looks like this is out of focus a little bit here and I shaved it down so instead of cutting it off and then sh shaving it down I just shaved it down all the way to the bottom so that I could then fit this guy a lot easier into it so there's my bearing inside the coupler and again I had to shave the inside of that coupler to make uh, that bearing fit nice and, and snug in there and would you want to be careful with this you want to make sure that your bearing is flush and and also um, uh, level. What happens is if it's not and it's slightly tilted on the inside, when it goes to meet the top of anything that you've got going on here, there's going to be uh, some problems with your balancing when you're going when you put in the uh, when you put this back in. So you want to make sure that that's as flush as possible. And then you put it in like that, and you're done. And then the Traxxas is um, a five sixteenth. So this is a five sixteenth hole into the metal tube. Um, as well as a 5 uh, hex screw that you can see in there. Next to it is a quarter inch that I've tightened down. You can use a hex if you want to. I just had a, a piece of quarter inch that I used, some quarter inch nuts, and then the uh, Photomate macro slider went right in there and then tightened the whole thing down so that it wouldn't uh, move around. And then this, what's nice is that this 5 sixteenth sits right underneath it, giving uh, some additional support there. And then again, you know, there's just the uh, quick release plate. I think this thing was eight bucks on eBay. I can't remember exactly which one it was. Maybe I'll post it in the uh, in the about section. And that's that. So here I am in the garage. I wanted to show you um, the Steadicam with a camera mounted, and um, I haven't kept mounted it on there just yet. But um, here it's sitting on. Um, I just have a vice and it's uh, just clamped in there that's the way I've been working on it uh, some of the parts that I've been using uh, it's a lot of trial and error on some of this stuff um, but I got a lot of these uh, fender washers as mentioned before uh, some smaller washers as well um, these I was going to use and try to make a, a little serrated piece so that I can mount it on top of the bearing and to see if that would work but when I put that in there um, the only thing it did really was tighten the whole thing too much and when you would turn it wouldn't be as smooth as uh, as if you didn't have it in there. Uh, naturally some 5 16 bolts, um, I've got some or uh, screw, uh, hex screws, I've got some quarter inch hex screws different lengths so I can try different things and uh, your mandatory drill with a uh, quarter inch bit, 5 16 bit, some other stuff. Um, here's uh, an example of one of the metal couplings and this one happens to have a 5 16 through it. Whoops. It just gives you an idea of some of the tools and some of the uh, pieces that I used. So here's my uh, T5i, fit with an 18 to 135 millimeter STMIS. Um, not the the widest angle lens for this type of application. It would be nice to have a kind of a cool fish eye or something that would go down to maybe 14 millimeters or something like that, like some of the other uh, videos that I've seen. But basically, here I'm going to open this guy up like that. And there it is. So that's what it looks like, basically. Nothing fancy. Very straightforward. One note I wanted to make, I almost forgot, is the way that this Traxxas piece meets the 5 16th at the top, the, the hex screw. Literally, I screwed the hex screw into the Traxxas uh, itself and it uh, self threaded through the plastic and that tightened it really really well I did not do what some uh, other videos show for example here 
which is to use some uh, hockey tape and uh, on a quarter inch screw and try to fit that in there. Uh, the problem I had with that was it was unstable. And uh, when you put the this into the hole right there and it would just move around too much even when with the tape in there and with uh, the Traxxas in its, you know, fit into into the 5 16th uh, hole in there. So um, I found it to be much more stable to use uh, a, a 5 16th hex screw and to just put it directly into the Traxxas.